Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good day. Welcome back to our course BMM 2533 Flick Mechanics 1. I hope everyone who is watching this video is in a good state of heart, feet and well. So I also hope that you are excited to finish your semester after I was hold at home for quite long, almost 3 months due to PKP. So today we're going to enter chapter 2, Fluid in Motion. First of all, I would like to disclaim it. The material in this video are adapted from various sources. However, few textbooks be used comprehensively. The explanation will be in both language, English and Bahasa. This video doesn't cover the whole topic. You may require to have further reading and revision. In this chapter 2, we will be covered um, four subtopics. Description of fluid in motion, control volume, and the third one, continuity equation, and lastly, Bernoulli equation. I will explain to you in details when it comes to the video that dedicated to the uh, specific subtopics. So for today, we will look on description of fluid in motion. Firstly, flow. As we know, there will be two regions that influence the flow. You do have pipe like this, and then you do have water going in it like this is the velocity this situation you will have actually two regions second regions and first region so this region is in viscid region this region is a viscous this region and this one also viscous region remember as the fluid flow in the pipe we can describe two important regions, viscous flow regions that are closer to the wall, right? And the region in between, which is called inviscid flow region. So flow can be divided into two, either internal flow or external flow. What I mean by internal flow and external flow is that when the fluid is flowing in a bounded surface or confined channel, it is internal flow, the internal flow, bounded surface. Whilst the flow of unbounded solid surface is considered external flow. For example, water flow in a pipe. This is pipe, water flow in it is an internal flow. Whilst the flow over a tennis ball, while the flow around the tennis ball move like this yeah is considered external flow two types of internal flow firstly is pipe flow the second one is open channel flow pipe flow for example like piping and plumbing system at our house or even a building or gas system in industrial application is considered as pipe flow right where actually the fleet is considered fill in the whole space in a pipe in open channel flow where the pipe or duct is only partially filled with fluid not fill in the whole space of the cylinder there is a free surface right this is free surface it is called open channel for instance the flows in the river or sewer or duct canals or drainage here are examples of open channel flow yep. when the flow of unbounded fluid over a surface the viscous effects are limited to boundary layer near solid surface we will learn about the boundary layers later especially in fluid mechanics 2 example of external flow air flow around the moving car for example the car moving to this way and then you will see the air flowing over the surface of the car or even an aircraft remember the aerodynamics where the flow moving over the wing or the aerodynamics of the aircraft the second description is flow compressibility so flow can be divided either compressible flow or incompressible flow as literally defined compress and incompress so compress means something that in high pressure due to very high speed once the incompress is in the opposite situation 
so compressible flow is when the density is when the density of fluid change during the flow due to the high speed of gas for example remember I said that a fluid has a nearly constant density and it's always considered incompressible flow for example the density of or we call rho water for example water density of water is about 1000 kilogram per meter cubic how about blood 1060 how about mercury mercury is 13600 and of course how about the gas gas is very light so gas usually at 20 degrees C temperature is considered about 1.225 it's very light yeah however when the gas when the system of gas involve high speed system dimensionless Mach number is often used what is dimensionless Mach number dimensionless Mach number is when we consider a speed of a flow uh, a speed of fluid flowing divided by a speed of sound so uh, usually speed of sound is 300 46 meter per second at room temperature then you can see if you do have a speed of flow let's say 100 meter per second you divide it by 346 meter per second then you can explain the value based on this table yeah look at this table yes. um, whenever you do have a uh, Mach number equal to one is considered sonic flow when I'm whenever the Mach number less than one it's considered subsonic flow and then after that if Mach number greater than one is actually supersonic flow and then whenever is way greater than one is actually hypersonic flow for example like this one like uh, the image of a model space shuttle Venezuela state gas dynamics lab this model space shuttle has Mach number of three that's very huge you have to bear in mind not all gas is considered compressible flow right whenever we calculate the gas but the density changes in the high speed gas is less than five percent is considered incompressible or the Mach number of the high speed gas less than 0 0.3 so it could be about must be the flow speed of the gas must be uh, less than 100 right so because 100 meter per second divided by by 300 meter per second so it's already 0 0.3 right okay good another important description of flow either the flow is steady or unsteady or either the flow is uniform flow or non-uniform term steady here implies no change at the point with time the opposite of steady flow definitely unsteady where the flow uh, always change at a point with a time uh, okay i will show you an example after this as i mentioned no change of fluid properties velocity pressure at a point with time uh, example like turbines palm boilers condenser the fluid properties always have similar value maximum and minimum so it's considered steady flow for example look at this green point time one of five seconds right this green uh, this green point at time one five seconds with velocity of 10 meter per second the, the same green point at time two which is 10 seconds it still have it still measure velocity of 10 meter per second so it's constant right the velocity value at that point over time period is constant for the unsteady flow the fluid properties change at the point with time for example at the same point point here at the five seconds the velocity reading is 10 meter per second however at the second time the same green point 
at the time of 10 seconds, the velocity already increased to 11 meter per second. How about the uniform and non-uniform? Uniform is almost considered the same. Uniform of the flow happen whenever there is no change of fluid property. For example, velocity pressure. No change with location over a specific region. Remember, steady and unsteady, no change with time. But this one, no change with location. So look at this uh, green point. Yep. Yeah. So, for example, like in this pipe, point number one and point number two, two location, right? Okay, two location of green point. Green point number one, green point number two. Of course, they have different location. So, at point number one, the green point reading is 10 meter per second. At green point number two, the reading is 10 meter per second as well. That means no change then it's uniform uh, this is horizontally how about vertically right vertically for example vertically the same reading as well at the all green points the same reading of velocity 10 meter per second for non-uniform flow it's actually um, same like unsteady where it, where they represent the opposite situation of the steadiness or the uniformity of the flow at a given instant, fleet properties change with location of a specific region. For example, point 0.1 and point 0.2. Uh, velocity at point 0.1 is 10 meter per second. Velocity at point 0.2, 11 meter per second. This one, if you look carefully, is actually 11. Sorry. So V1 is 10 meter per second. V2 is 11 meter per second. So it's uniform and non-uniform. Another important description of fluid in motion always behave at the lamina or turbulent. However, bear in mind, in between lamina and turbulent, it's always transitional. Experiment of fluid flow in a pipe can describe different state of flow by injecting, for example, contrast dye in it. For lamina flow, the fluid motion, for example, you do have a pipe, right? You do have a pipe and then uh, the flow moving that way, that way, and then you inject a dye here contrast dye you inject dye and then the dye definitely will be dispersed uh, throughout the um, pipe so whenever you do have lamina flow lamina flow usually represent by uh, low velocity of the fluid the dye go at the straight line like a flow of high viscosity fluids such as oils at low velocity definitely represent by lamina flow condition so for the turbulent flow you will see we do have the same dye contrast dye but a high velocity and then you will see the highly disorder the highly disorder fluid motion uh, that typically occurs at high velocity and it's characterized usually by the velocity fluctuations you see the fluctuations now, in the between of them they have transitional flow where the flow is transitioning from lamina to turbulent the flow can be described by the Reynolds number here the Reynolds number is very important you can tell the state of the flow by calculating the row of the fluid which is the vel the density of the fluid this is the density this is the velocity of the fluid this is the diameter of the fluid divided by what divided by viscosity of the fluid and then if you do have free knot number less than 2300 consider lamina or greater than 4000 consider turbulent flow and then in between of them transition flow but bear in mind we are actually doing internal flow only external flow will have different Reynolds number values that can be considered either lamina or turbulent you will go in details on the external flow in fluid mechanics too Another important description of motion is remember Lagrangian and Eulerian. I I've explained a brief about this in the chapter one. Okay, 
So can you imagine, how can you measure the velocity of water flowing in a river, huge river? Will you measure every single of water molecule in the river? Or maybe you throw sticks or branches to the river and set the timer. Both approach described in detail earlier by Professor Lagrinian and Professor Eulerian. Let's see about Lagrinian first. Lagrinian theorem was invented by Joseph Lagrinian, France professor. He treats fluid particle uh, such like snooker ball. So this concept in flow is applicable where the fluid in container, for example, like this container. Let's say this is container and then you do have many particles in it. So every single particle, you keep track. To measure what? To measure the properties of the fluid. Meanwhile, Eulerian was invented by Professor Euler, a Switzerland professor, where the flow is not measured by tracking every single particle, but he introduced flow domain or control volume. Well, this is control volume. They put control volume to cover the particle and then he defined variable in space of time within the control volume yeah. to calculate the, the pressure field and velocity field. This kind of method, Eulerian method, is widely used especially in experimental study. Eulerian is considered macroscopic approach and then Lagrangian is considered as microscopic approach. Flow visualization also very important. Uh, streamline is the curve that are tangent to the instantaneous of local velocity. For example, if you do have, um, let's say, two single point, right? Instead of having go straight to this way, you go straight tangent to it, right? Everywhere. So basically, is actually as uh, tangent to the instantaneous local velocity vector. Example of the streamlines here, you will see, let's say you do have duct like this. Yeah. Uh, from the large diameter to the small diameter, you will see the flow try to fit in, in the small diameter here. And then you will see, using the streamlines, it's beautiful. We can tell uh, the velocity, velocity changes from the uh, large diameter to the small diameter of the pipe and also we can tell where using the velocity vector here you can tell that the flow is actually having recirculation zone somewhere here where the flow is actually having like this yeah yeah mm. and then go to here right for the path line a path line is the actual path traveled by an individual fleet particle over some time period. This is path line. You do have one, two, three point. Path line, you will keep track exactly where the particle go. This so, streamline in path line or flow visualization, visualization is the last thing that I want to share with you in this video. I hope you enjoy and uh, I'll see you again in the video part two. Thank you.